Good afternoon, everybody. It's the Baker Bunch Podcast, episode, I believe, seven, maybe six. Um, maybe six. <laughs> I don't know. I might be wrong. I probably am. Um, Doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, today, um, uh, with always my co-host, my father, Michael. Hello. Hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome in. And today, we are, we're we're going to talk about a serious subject again. Yeah. You know, we're always fairly serious, I guess, but this one, pretty, I think, very important to us, and that is healthcare in America. Healthcare in the world. Healthcare in the world? Yeah, oh, well, okay. kind of. We're kind of take, I kind of, I did a, quite a bit of research for this one. I kind of took the world view of healthcare compared to the American view or vice versa. American view compared to the world view. What's good, what's bad. And uh, I don't know. It could be a controversial subject, I suppose. Yeah, maybe. And, I mean, uh, that's okay. You know, we've been pretty generic here lately with our podcast, so maybe a little. Yeah, and there's a part of me that's kind of like, all right, let's yeah, let's shake it up a little. Let's shake it up. Let's go for it. <laughs> yeah. Who cares? You know yeah. what? I don't care. I don't care what it, what they think. If I yeah. gotta pay a all fine right. to Ron DeSantis, and let yeah. me pay the fine to Ron DeSantis. So all right, yeah, there you go. He can kiss off on that one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, I'll let you take the lead on this one because I've been. First of all, how you how you been doing? <laughs> I'm great. <laughs> doing, I'm doing good. good. <laughs> Got my uh, second cataract surgery done, so I can see. Holy shit! And life is. Go. Life is bright, <laughs> <laughs> very and colorful, colorful. <laughs> and it's good. Very good, so, very uh, good. Yeah, I'm glad to get that done. Yeah, it's very good. We start shooting tomorrow, so I've been very busy. Yeah, yeah, with you know, movie planning movies. Which is why we're doing this today. So we're yeah. a little early, but we'll post it and it'll show up in a few days. Yeah, so. yeah, it should be good. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, should should have it ready. I'll probably get ready tonight and yeah. just get it ready to go tomorrow or Tuesday or something. Um, but yeah, getting ready to do that. So pretty excited. Yeah. Terrified. Yeah, we'll get all of the above. <laughs> so get it done the next couple of weeks. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully it's all goes smooth. I think it will. I think we'll be yeah. okay. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty much it. So I'm going to let you take the lead on this one since I unfortunately have not been able to do the research I wanted to do on no, it. That's fine. Um, yeah, this is a topic that's been interesting to me. I'm for full disclosure. I'm a pretty fortunate American. I have, I spent, you know, I spent a career in the military, 24 years, and that afforded me some very good health care. I'm currently on Medicare. You know, I'm over 65. I'm on Medicare, which I love. Medicare is great. Uh, don't let, let anybody tell you. Of course, I don't have any serious medical issues either, but for me, Medicare is working just fine. And I also have, for a supplemental insurance, because you always need a Medicare supplemental, and those can be expensive. And uh, also very complicated. But for me, fortunately, I have TRICARE for Life, which a bunch of military retirees had to sue the government to get. Because when we joined the military, we were promised us and our dependents could have free medical care for life. But that never really happened. <laughs> and about right. when I retired from the military, I was paying... I had what we call TRICARE standard, and I was paying for a supplemental insurance to cover what TRICARE standard did not cover. And that included co-pays to see the doctor, co-pays for medicine, co-pays for all kinds of things. And uh, so that promise of free medical care really wasn't there until you turn 65. And then Medicare kicks in, which takes the bulk of it, and then TRICARE covers the rest but it took a lawsuit to get that hmm. and uh so you know <laughs> that's just the way it is but for me now i'm very happy with my medical care so full disclosure i did a i wanted to find out you know uh, the best medical in the world who has the best so i did a bunch of research and it depends where you look uh the rankings I, I took the top ten because you know you could you could go down rabbit holes with this stuff and and uh, the top ten or a couple of them are a little surprising to me. Number one is South Korea. Hmm. I was surprised to see that. Number two is Taiwan. Really? Yeah. Huh. Number three was Denmark. Four was Austri Austria. Japan number five. Australia number six. France number seven. Spain number eight. And finish it out with Belgium, and 10 is the United Kingdom. Now, you can go to 20 or 30 different websites and get 20 or 30 different rankings. 
Okay. But mostly these 10 were consistently in the top. You know what I mean? Just in different order. Just slightly different. Slightly okay. different order. And sometimes Canada would sneak into the top 10 and, and uh, uh, like Taiwan wouldn't be there. But the one I used is U.S. News and World Report because they do a lot of that stuff. They mm. they do a lot of these rankings of things. And I thought, well, you know, I'll just use that one. And so that's what we have here. That's the one I just read to you. So, uh, and another thing I wanted to know is how much do they spend on their health care? Because everybody says this universal health care that most of these countries have is very, very expensive. So... Um, on average, the best healthcare system on this survey was Korea, South Korea, and they spend about 8% of their gross domestic product on healthcare. That's almost nothing. I mean, that's, that's pretty low. That's pretty low. The United States, we have our healthcare on this report, on this U.S. News and World Report site, ranks us as 35th in the world in healthcare, and we are the worst of the big seven you know what they call the G7 yeah. countries. Absolute worst by far. Not even close. Not even close. Yeah, in, in healthcare. That, yeah. And we spend 17.8% of our GDP on healthcare. Fuck. So what do we get for our money? Nothing. <laughs> not a not the best healthcare system. No, not at all. And and uh, and doing my research, and I, I, we talked about it the other day, just eating dinner or something. We don't really have a healthcare system. No. We have a healthcare industry. Yes. And that seems to be the problem. Yeah, because there's we, no incentive to make no it cheaper. There's no incentive to make it cheaper. None. You know, and and it was really, a, I've got a whole, oh, i got three pages of notes here if, <laughs> if you're interested that, <clears throat> that uh, you know, the biggest reason the U.S. health care is so expensive is it's based on for-profit insurance system. In other words, the insurance companies are in it to make a profit. Everybody has to buy some kind of health insurance, right? I mean, everybody does. Yeah, you have to, or else you get uh, fined at the end of the year in your taxes. Yeah, exactly. And even if your employer is paying for it, they're not paying for all of it. I don't Usually know any half. employer that pays all of it. If you're fortunate, maybe half. I did get lucky. Um, Earnhardt's, uh, who I left, shout out to Earnhardt's in uh, Phoenix, they took very good care of us. They pay, But they still paid 80% which is the most anybody I've ever worked yeah, for in my good. life. Yeah. Um, and my insurance through them was uh, about one, it was about 84 every pay period. So twice a month. Uh, Cause the way car business works, so you get paid like on the fifth. It's like the military. Right? Yeah, we get paid on the fifth and the 25th of every yeah. month. So I was. So that's about 120. Yeah. 100, no, 80 to 80. 160. Yeah, it's not, but it's a lot better oh. than like here. I worked for a company, and I won't say them because they were horrible, but they paid almost nothing for of our health insurance, and I was paying about 170 a pay period. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So you know that's the biggest reason why our health care is so expensive is for profit insurance companies run the whole damn thing, and they got you by the balls. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't not. There's a lot of people in this country that don't have health insurance. I am one of them. And and these people fear, like you. I am one of them. <laughs> for getting sick oh, and yeah. not being able to pay the bills. Yeah. You know, you can go bankrupt very quickly yeah, and just trying to take care of yourself. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know if that's right or wrong, but I'm, and I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to criticize one and praise the other. I'm just going to put out some facts here. Uh, most health insurance is administered by private companies. An individual must pay for it themselves, even if the employer subsidizes part of it. Now, if you work for a small company, like say I owned a, a bookstore, because mm -hmm. I love books, I own a bookstore, mm -hmm. and I had two employees, I'm probably not going to be paying for their health insurance. No, not at all. You know, I mean, and I'm probably going to pay them slightly over minimum wage. I mean, <laughs> think I about it. I did that you know? when I owned my store in um, Arizona. I had yeah. one employee. Yeah. I did not, we did not have a health insurance plan. We no. couldn't. I, uh, I, I mean, couldn't I couldn't, it. I wouldn't be able to afford to do that. No. So there's a whole lot of uninsured people out there. And, uh, and lots of countries, and France is one of them. Uh, I'm a little bit familiar with the French 
healthcare system because Matthew lives there. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the primary reasons he moved there. Yes. Was to get into their healthcare system because it's it's pretty good. It's I mean, they good. have a and very some good of one. these surveys that I read, it's ranked number one in the world. It's always up there. It's usually, usually it's, uh, it was always in the top ten. Yeah, always. always. Yeah. And uh, they have some private elements to it, and they have the way it works. As I understand it, talking to Matthew, is he goes to the doctor, he pays a flat fee like twenty five euros mm -hmm. or whatever. And at the end of the day, he can get a rebate on part of that. You know, when you go and, and the sicker you are, in other words, the more serious, if you have cancer, the bigger the money rebate you get back. Okay. So you're paying almost nothing if you're, a, if you're say, a heart patient or a cancer patient or something that's Makes really life-threatening. So there's a private element to it. You go to your private doctor. And they get paid through the healthcare system. The doctors do. They charge a flat fee, and you get part of that money back at the end of the day. Mm. So your healthcare costs are they're really quite low, but you do pay. Yeah. But you know what you're going to pay. That's a big one right there. If I break, like when I fractured my elbow, or when I, you know, if you break a bone or something, you don't know what it's going to cost at the end of the day. You have no idea. You go yeah. into the emergency room say, okay, i got a broken arm. How much is this going to cost me? They don't know. <laughs> they can't tell you. Whereas in uh, a lot of these countries, and I'm using France because I know just a tiny little bit about it, you're going to know when you walk through the door how much it's going to cost. Mm -hmm. And you're going to know that you're going to get a good amount of that money back after you pay the upfront fee, which... Uh, Matthew had to go to the emergency room. What was it like? He paid sixty dollars. I think altogether, all medication, together? Um, his hospitalization medication was sixty five dollars. Yeah, sixty five euro or euro, about sixty five dollars, yeah, about sixty five bucks. Yeah. So, but in this country, you have no idea. You know, you're going to have to pay something. Uh, most people pay a copay just to walk in the door, and that could vary depending on your insurance coverage, and. You know, you have no idea. One of the big ones I always remember was my arm when I shattered my arm. Yeah. And that big surgery, it was depending on the piece of paper I got, how much that surgery cost. I'd see a piece of paper from one, you know, one thing, you know, for the workman's comp stuff because it was done at work. And it was, you know, $50,000 to repair this arm. Mm -hmm. I'd seen another one. It was 100 yeah, I'd I see another one. It was ninety, and I'm like, yeah. I don't know how much my arm actually costs no because idea. nobody really knows how yeah. much my arm cost. And they charge whatever they can think they can get away with. Yeah, that's so. probably why it changed so much. You know, eventually settled probably somewhere between fifty to a hundred thousand. Yeah, but all of this motive to make money, which of course it's a capitalist society, we should well, it's we're quasi yeah. quasi capitalist. Of course, we want to make money. These companies are in business to make money, but it 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 increases prices. Oh, you yeah. know, it's a ripple effect on prices. You know, whether medical service is covered under a given plan. You know, an enormous amount of money that these insurance companies spend are to not pay you for their services. Mm -hmm. All the research I did. That was mentioned time and time again. They spend more money on not paying people than they do on actually paying people. Hmm. They will spend thousands and thousands of dollars on your case to tell, try to tell you that it's not covered in your plan. Hmm. You know, they have they hire people to do that, you know. And, and that, to me, that's almost shameful. But it's the way it works. Hmm. And uh, I don't know. It's... it's uh, a lot of people that were interviewed for all the articles I read are advocates. I'm not, I'm not going to say this too, are advocates for universal health care because you can control the costs. You know, I have, I wasn't as a young man. I wasn't either. I never but was. I, as I've gotten older and have gone through life and have been injured and, and been sick and yeah. things, I don't think it is right that health is. There's a paywall behind good health. And I understand doctors go to college and they got to pay for college. Yeah. I get it. And I understand we have insurance companies, but th we also need to 
I'm not really, it's, it's a, such a weird subject for me because I am a capitalist and I, I'm not really into government coming in saying this business can no longer exist. But that might have to happen uh, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. for insurance companies. It might yeah. have to come in and say, look, you guys are detrimental to the future of our nation. We can't have you anymore, yeah. you know, and I, it sucks because maybe that is one of those things because, you know, it is in the Constitution. The government is to protect its people. Could this be part of that? Well, most other countries, health care is a right. It's yeah. Not, uh, it's the right to so, life. Uh, yeah, it, it is a right. Yeah. So they provide good health services to their people. In America, health care... It's if a you're privilege. a if you're a middle class working guy, it's expensive. Oh, it's extremely. You know, and I like I said, I've been fortunate in my life to I made choices in my life to where I, you know, managed to. Oh yeah. Get pretty good health care coverage for my family without, you know, without spending thousands and thousands of dollars. But as an uh, an adult, um, you know, I'm a always been a blue a blue collar i mean i was a white collar guy for a little while but most of my life i've been a blue collar guy and health insurance and medical expenses are the biggest fear of anybody that was in that bracket i mean that's it would terrify me if i got sick or i, I got hurt or in an accident i was like oh shit yeah what do i do i what don't want to go to the doctor cost, you know? remember that time i had that um the, the tachycardia thing going with my heart was just beating fast for no reason. Couldn't figure it out. Went to the ER. I was terrified of that bill more than I was the fact that I could have been having a heart attack, <laughs> yeah. you know, and that's, yeah, that's something that's broken in our nation. And I, I know there's it's a, a lot of it to me comes down to this lobbying issue. Yeah. I was going to talk a little bit about how to fix it. I got ideas on how to fix it. Yeah. You know, but, but, you know, some of the more let me let me go through. Yeah, okay, go ahead. We'll we'll get first. there. Yeah. Uh, another problem is everybody's paying for somebody else's underpayment because these insurance mm. companies aren't paying somebody's bill. Your ex care gets more expensive. You uh, know what I mean? Okay. You know, because the insurance companies and the hospitals and the service providers need to make money. Mm -hmm. So if I go to the hospital and I don't have insurance. And I see the doctor, somehow that doctor's got to get paid. Yeah. So they're going to up the prices. It makes everything more expensive. Huh. Instead of just covering everybody. Yeah. You know, the people that have the means to pay are paying way more than what they should. Because they're paying for everybody else's underpayment. Hmm. Yeah, I hope you follow that logic. I hope I explained that well. I'm not sure. I think Yeah, I got that. Yeah. It's kind of uh, a similar concept to... Um, Almost like how banking works in a way. Yeah. You, you know, know, like I have that money in savings, but if I were to pull that money out now, that would freak that bank out because they've already loaned that money to yeah, other people. It's kind of like that, but, you know, somebody's got to pay. Yeah. You know, so if the guy that doesn't have health insurance shows up in the emergency room and they're going to treat him, they have to. By law. By yeah. law. And that's okay. I'm okay with that. You know, if you're sick, you need to get help. You need to get medical care. That's fine. But... That doctor's got to get paid at the end of the day, so who's going to pay for it? Everybody else is, that has medical insurance is going to pay more hmm. because of that underpayment. It's sort of, sort of like shoplifting at the Walmart. Hmm. Prices are jacked up a little bit because they know they're going to have some loss, so they factor that loss into their pricing. Just that simple. You know, it's the same thing. So, <laughs> getting warm in here, yeah. <laughs> Uh, another thing that we do in this country that most other countries don't do, and I'm, I see it all the time, and your mother and I have talked about it, being having a really good health care coverage, is they jump on, oh, you need a CAT scan. Oh, you need this. Oh, mm. you need that. You need this test. You need that test. And a lot of these doctors that I, that I looked at all, these, <laughs> all this writing about this are saying, you know, a lot of times you can just sit down with a patient, get their medical history, get their symptoms, and figure out what's wrong with them. That's what doctors do. But hmm. they jump on all this other stuff. Oh, he's got good health insurance. Let him go get a CAT scan that way there. You know, we'll, you know and, and that increases prices. Hmm. You know, 
So it, it happens all the time. I mean, uh, I had a heart issue some years ago, and I went into the do- the doctor, and the first thing I got was uh, EKGs, echo, you know the. Yeah, I got one of those with you mine. Know, yeah. you, you know, stress tests, and I had all like five or six tests before I even saw the friggin' doctor that I needed to see, you know? And it's like, he probably could have figured out what was wrong with me just by talking to me, mm-hmm. you know? But I don't know, maybe not. But I was happy to get the care, and it didn't cost me a whole lot of money, so that's okay. But that the way that we, we charge for these services... It, it call you know hospitals want to and and providers you know the the x-ray center wants to do x-rays that's what they're in business for mm-hmm. so it's incentive to get get that stuff unnecessary tests i suppose done yeah, yeah. you know and not well, that all of them are unnecessary i'm not saying that at all but i bet a pretty good percentage of them you could probably do without that cat scan or without that you know Whatever test, whatever it is, you know. Hmm. But uh, you know, that's a that's a big cost driver and drives the cost of everything up. Another big cost driver is a lack of government regulations. These insurance companies are not regulated hardly at all. They pretty much do whatever the hell they really, want. Really, in the era of over yeah. regulation on <laughs> yeah. pretty much every other business known, that is one that it's not. That's and they don't have to negotiate. Well, they do negotiate with, like, drug makers, you know, for the cost of the drugs. But these drug companies know, that, you know, that they can pretty much charge whatever they want. And they're going to get paid for it. Whereas if, like, it, uh, let me tell a story about, here we go, France again. But I, uh, my foreign healthcare experience, I had to go. Well, we had to go to the pharmacy to get COVID tests the first time we went over there. Yeah, that's to right. come home. Yeah. So you walk into a French pharmacy and they have one on every corner. They're everywhere. I mean, you you can't walk two blocks without running into one. And you walk in there, and the pharmacist, there's like they're really well staffed, and everything in there is generic. I don't know if you noticed that or not. I um, there were no brand name products yeah. in there whatsoever none i didn't even really well it's funny i didn't really look but i did notice and it kind of made me laugh i've had asthma since i was a child i could buy i could have bought a buterol right there on the counter on the counter yeah yes. it was right there behind right there. the lady although i would have to say is look i have one of these i need a new one and she would have gave it to me and yeah. and it was 25 dollars. yeah you know how much i pay here 75 dollars for one of those bad boys yeah see <laughs> because that's because the single payer system allows whoever's in charge of it, like in, in Great Britain, it's the what are they, NHS, National Health System Service. I think so. Or NH, yeah, NHS. And they go to the drug companies and say, no, 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 no. We're not going to pay you, you know, $50 for that drug. We're going to give you 25 And hmm. that's it. That's all you're getting. You know, and these dr- and, and they still make a profit. You know, everybody has to make a profit. You're making the product. you got to make a profit doing it. Oh, I so. agree. Yeah. So, you know, you're not going to rip them off. I mean, you're not going to say, oh, no, you know, you're, you're not going to make a profit. But at the same time, you got to control the cost. Uh, there's a big article that, that I stumbled upon just in the regular news the other day that they're capping the price of, uh, what you call it, for diabetes? Uh, oh, insulin. Insulin, yeah. insulin at $35 a dose. Here in the United States. About damn time. About damn time. But you know what it costs on the average anywhere else in the world? Yeah. About $20. That's insane. 15 to $20. I had a buddy so. in, uh, at Earnhardt. He only worked with us. Uh, he had a, a regular full-time job, but he's a diabetic. He was a type 1, which is the genetic version. Mm-hmm. So he had the thing in his arm. Uh, he's a really good kid, and he's one of our technicians. He... <coughs> Worked with us solely because of our health insurance was good, and he worked enough hours to get his health insurance. He was a, he was a technician. He turned enough hours just to get that health insurance so he could pay for his diabetic medicine. And then he has full-time job. His actual full-time job had the health insurance, and he would kind of use it to mm-hmm. kind of compensate for each other. You know, so because besides that, that, that poor kid was, what, 26? Probably would have been broke. Yeah. You know, he had to work two jobs just to pay for 
something that he can't control, like, yeah. you know, and, and it's kind of shit. And he can't live without. And he can't live without. He would yeah. die, you know, and yeah. that's not right either, you know. You know, one study that I looked at found that uh, private insurance company pays almost two and a half times what Medicare would have paid for the same service at the same facility. <laughs> you know. I'm not surprised. So uh, our medical care is costly because of our health care industry, <laughs> not our health care system. Well, we don't. Uh, yeah, we don't really have one. And another big problem is all of these hospitals and and insurance companies are consolidating. You see it all the time. Yes. You know, a hospital group like HCA mm -hmm. here in Florida just went and bought the Orange Park Medical Center. No, oh, no kidding. One of their biggest hospitals here in Clay County, where we live, they went and bought it out, and it makes their empire a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, you know. So you end up having grow. corporate, pure corporate So you corporate have this, and, and you have stockholders, and stockholders want dividends. and. So, so you have a Disney situation, but medical. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It, it, it's, uh, when, you, when you really dig in and read about it, it, man, I learned a lot about this stuff, and it's like, holy crap. Our healthcare system is not that good. No. You know, we have some of the most technologically advanced healthcare. But the average Joe who's out there working 40 hours a week and trying to feed his family, or 50 hours a week or 100 hours a week, can't afford it. Yeah. You know, I mean, and it's, t it's too bad. It is you a know? system it's if uh, you are rich. It is amazing. Oh, yeah. 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 You know, I'm, I'm happy with my medical care. But, I hope, you know, but at the same time, I'm not happy that the guy down the street with four kids is, you know, probably no. struggling to pay their health care bills you yeah know? or and, uh, you know my my friends you know they have two children yeah and god forbid if one of them gets sick uh -huh. you know they have this crazy health thing where like one kid is on his the other kid is on hers so they can split the cost of mm -hmm. of everything you know and they yeah. have it down all figured out to the penny but god forbid if one of those kids gets sick oh, they're screwed uh -huh. i mean and they know it it, it sucks yeah. you know it, it really sucks yeah it's really bad so how do you fix it i got some ideas <laughs> <laughs> for me personally you start with one thing that is going to be unpopular and it'll never happen you make lobbying an act of treason that's if i was <laughs> to wake up tomorrow morning in the in the in the white house and i was the president of the united states the first thing i would do uh, wouldn't be that no i would put together a a team of a, of people to go around the world and take these top 10 healthcare countries that have the best healthcare and go see what they do and see what we can take from them that will work in our country. And on this thing, I would put a couple of, I would keep the politicians to a minimum, but I'd have one from each party probably. And if there were any true independents, I might throw one of them on there, but no there really thing. aren't any true independents in Congress, but I'd probably, and I would take a congressman that's been around for a while and knows how to cheat the system, you know, who's been paid off by lobbyists for forever years or something. <laughs> and, and I would put, you know, one from each party or two from each party or whatever. I'd get some doctors on there. I would get some people in the trenches, in the medical, the people that work in the emergency rooms, people, you know, I wouldn't make them too big. You don't want this thing too big, but, but, you know, I th and I would send them around, and they would have a limited amount of time and a limited budget to go around and take the best of what these other countries are doing and bring it back and say, okay, write us a plan. That makes know? sense, yeah. Yeah, that's what I would do. And then, as the president, I'd draft an executive order banning all health care lobbying. And then I would present my bill to Congress and say, "Here, you're going to you pass." You'd be this. immediately impeached. Well, that's why that's why I wouldn't do it right away. Because if True. you ban the if you ban the uh, the lobbying, they're they're probably going to bring you up on impeachment charges or take you to court or whatever. Now, again, no, that would expose the true problem with America right there for everybody is the is lobbying. corporate lobbying. Corporate lobbying, and everybody kind of got mad at Barack Obama when he called out the Supreme Court when he said. Because the Supreme Court said corporations are people. And he said, no, it's bullshit. It's pretty much bullshit. They're not. They are a bunch of freaking people who are just lobbying you, giving you money 
to vote their way all the time. This is BS. Stop doing it. We this is not right. And then the Supreme Court's like, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And know. made it. It just opened up the floodgates to you know the finance. They made the finance reform bill unconstitutional. It made. I mean, they. Ju- I mean, these lobbyists. They they kick the crap out of America. You know, I've, I've been around a while, and as I've gotten older, I've realized that I have no representation in Congress. That no. Congress could give two shits about me, Republican as a or Democrat. Republican, they don't Democrat, care. Independent. I don't give a shit who they are. Yeah. All they want from me is my vote. Yep. After that, they don't care. If I if I lose my military ID or something, or if the VA says I'm dead when I'm not, well, they'll step in there and help me fix that, you know. But you know, but otherwise, uh, they don't care about me. They'll take they a photo ca- with you too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they'll take my yeah, take a photo with me. Yeah, especially if I have a veteran's hat on or something. <laughs> oh, look at me! I like veterans, you know, which I never wear. But anyway, yeah, uh, true. But uh, they don't care about us. Yeah, they have their, they get their. They care about the people lining their back pocket. Sure, absolutely. It is amazing. uh, Um, If you wake up and realize that, America, please think about it. Watch what these people do. Oh, yeah. They don't do shit. They don't do a goddamn thing. You know, I mean, we have now have a Republican Congress and thankfully a Democrat Senate. So they nothing gets done. And that's a good thing. Currently, yes. Currently, but all the promises you were told when these Republicans got elected to Congress, we're going to vote on closing the borders, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do that. They couldn't even elect the fucking Speaker of the House, and they have done nothing. Literally nothing. Nothing. Nothing at all. And so please, people, wake up and pay attention. And this is something to think about, <laughs> too, on the other side. Um, AOC was a bartender, right? Mm-hmm. She became a congresswoman. Now all of a sudden she has this big, beautiful home. Oh, sure. She has this <laughs> yeah. big, beautiful car. Oh, yeah. A good-looking yeah, no, boyfriend. I'm not, I'm not picking sides here. You know, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. just saying. They all It's suck. bullshit, right? <laughs> yeah. You've got freaking Bernie Sanders, who's done nothing in his entire life, and now all of a sudden he has all these houses. Oh, yeah. You have Marjorie Taylor Greene, who couldn't spell cat if you spotted her the C and the T, and now all of a sudden she's this wealthy woman. Yeah. You know, it's all because of the backroom bullshit, and I yeah. can't. I hate it. I can't I do stand too. it. It needs to be fixed. But anyway, back to healthcare. Um, yes. Sorry. You know, <laughs> I've I've always thought to myself since I spent 24 years in the military and uh, the fraud, waste, and abuse is uh, <laughs> is there. Oh yeah. Yeah, there was huge defense budgets. I, you know, we could we could cut those back some, um, or maybe quite a lot. But I always thought maybe we should spend more money on healthcare than we do on bullets. And then I did the research on that, and I was wrong. 17.8% of the GDP for healthcare, and for bullets, it's only 3.4%. So, damn. Yeah, <laughs> I was surprised. But I the biggest shocked. part of our yearly, year well, okay, we don't really have it. We haven't had a balanced yeah, budget but, since Bill Clinton, but... But yeah, but the GDP is all the money in the country. You yeah, know, private, public, you know, gross I mean, domestic so profit. Gross domestic yeah. product. Yeah, so, so it's the whole know. what's left yeah. over after yeah. taxes. So and shit. Uh, yeah, I was a little surprised by that. But even at three point four percent, we're still the highest in the world. That we're still double of pretty I, much everybody. Not quite double, but yeah, we're, we're almost double to China. I think China's number two, and we're still almost double them. I think, but. Uh, yeah, I didn't research that. I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, I I, I, that's a whole nother. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's yeah, a whole nother that's, that's, that's that's discussion there. But one that would be uh, cool to have. But, but paying here in America, paying as much as we do for health care, we're getting ripped off. We are really getting ripped off. And yeah, that's the research I found out. I went into this thinking, you know, we have a pretty good health care system and, and, in all of that, I, I really didn't think I was going to find all this stuff that I found. <laughs> I guess I was a little surprised. Uh, for me, you know, I've always been on the opposite end of, of your perspective, on, of your spectrum on this, on health insurance. And I've always wondered, like, why do we do this to ourselves? And then I thought, okay, the Obamacare thing came through. And I wasn't a fan of the Obamacare thing because it did something that I... I I'm against because who lo- who got in there, the lobbyists for the healthcare industry, mm-hmm. and they lobbied the Democrats to put in that every human being 
must have health insurance or they face a fine. Well, it turns out the fine is cheaper. Than Sometimes. health insurance. <laughs> yeah. And actually, I think they suspended the fines. They they had to, yeah. <laughs> yeah which yeah. was a smart move, but at the same time, and then you got the Republicans put their hands in it, and they gutted things that were good. They kept what was they thought was good, and then Democrats come back in, and they gut some more things and keep what they yeah. think is good. Before you, you know, know, we don't have really, we have, the Obamacare bill is gone. Well, I know some people that use that national health care, that clearinghouse it's oh no a website yeah you can go on there and find health insurance and a lot of people like it because you it? can go in there and you can shop and compare plans like you can go in there you have asthma you can go in there what's the best plan in my area for an asthmatic mm-hmm. and they will show you plans and costs and stuff based on your age and all you know all the other criteria that they have you know and and that's what people like about it but it's still ridiculously expensive to buy the, buy yes. the health insurance. I got a thing when I owned my business. I mean, I'm a, a small business owner here too. and But over the, over there, I was a functioning retail small business. And we got, uh, I, got I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go on there and check my plan. And I did. It was so astronomical, and it was like this isn't worth it to me. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'll just it's go just buy not. the medicine as I need it, and, and I do. Yeah. I've been doing that mm-hmm. for since I well since I left my last since I I stopped being in the car business. Yeah, I've been doing that. And but if you ever have a catastrophic, oh, I'm fucked. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like viciously <laughs> fucked. Yeah. <laughs> and another true. thing that happened to me that kind of woke me up to our system too is. When your grandfather came to stay with us for a while, these Medicare supplementals are not portable. You can't take one from Maine to Florida. I figured that out. We figured that out real quick. I've always felt that was something they need to fix. That's something they need to fix. Yeah. That's an easy fix, too. Just make it. You Just know. make it one national thing. So I don't, at the time, this was how many years ago? I was I was still working. I was still. It's about five, four or five. I was still yeah. under. I was not 65, so I was not on Medicare. And I didn't really understand the whole I hadn't researched it. I didn't care about it because I wasn't there yet. And uh, so I call United Healthcare, I think it was. I'm going to use their name that had him covered. And you don't talk to any experts there. You talk to salespeople. Yeah. And they're trying to sell you the Cadillac. When all you really need is the Chevy, <laughs> you know, I mean, you just need the Pinto. You know, I just, I, you know, and I'm talking to these people and it's like, I, first of all, I don't really understand everything you're trying to tell me here. So I need to go hang up here and, and, and look into this. And why is this so hard? If I'm an 80 year old man and my supplemental renews every year and I'm not computer savvy, and, you know, like I got a guy down the street here that I see all the time. He can't figure out how to use his smart TV. And he's going to go find a supplemental Medicare plan that suits him. And because you got it's a, and, you know, it's that thing that always bugs me is we have we run around and we talk about freedom of this and freedom of that. But you still have this so-called free, you know, a freedom based health care system that is still backed by the United States government. They back it just enough to make it complicated. <laughs> it's it it's either so... go in all the way yeah. or get the hell out. <laughs> I know? mean, every year, you know, and I get bombarded because I'm, I'm on the, everybody's mailing list. I get all these supplemental things in the mailbox. I bet I get 30 pounds of mail. Oh, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. Healthcare, <laughs> health insurance companies every year during the open season or whatever they call it to where you can open change season. your... That's accurate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where they hunt you down <laughs> during the season. And, and uh, of course, I throw it all away because I don't need it, thankfully. But I, every time I get one of those, I think to myself, what if I was in that position? What the hell would I do? I mean, you know, I know I there's know. people out there to help, you know, like councils for aging and things like that. But holy shit, <laughs> this stuff is crazy, you know. And, and your mom's friends, yeah. uh, they're all elderly, and they – a lot of them aren't real computer savvy and they can't figure out how to do some things. And Most I, aren't, I've tried you know? to help them out with some stuff. And I remember just getting them on an appointment to get a damn COVID shot. They, they couldn't figure out how to do it, you know? And I, 
So I'll, I'll take care of you guys. Don't worry. Give me all your information. <laughs> Give me everything I need. I'll get you guys in. We'll get you a shot. And we did. But they didn't know how to do it. Mm. Something as simple as that. You know, and yet you got to shop and buy these complicated medical plans that are your life and death, you know, and without really understanding what the hell you're doing. This whole system needs to be fixed. And and it's from the ground up, you know, it's... And it's not going to get It's going to take one... It's going to take some real strong leadership, and we haven't yeah. had any of that in Washington in probably 50 years. <laughs> At least. You know, you know so, The few times they know. tried, it got met, you know, it's just the weirdest thing. And I kind of agree with... Uh, with Bill Maher when, you know, this whole thing was coming through. It's like, this is going to help you. The people who are against this are the people it's going to help the most. Yeah. All of these, uh, Hey, let's, let's take healthcare to this. Let's do this. This is what we, here's our plan. Here's my healthcare plan. I think it's a good plan. And it's no, we can't do that. Socialism. It's like, whoa, whoa, what, what is <laughs> Medicare? Socialism. What is Medicaid? What is social security? What is social security? What is what, our welfare system? What it's, is, I mean, you go down the list. It's all wealth redistribution. It's all freaking wealth We're a mixed economy. Yeah. You know, so what's one more program? And it's what's not one, one step closer to communism. No, it's not. It's absolutely <laughs> you know? not. And no, it's not. You know. You would really, I've always felt like invest in America. America should invest in its people. Yes. You're, we're not investing in its people. We are investing in corporations corporations mm -hmm. it's like when um the covid thing happened right and the money came out for covid and my small business that i worked for at the time they had to lie beg cheat and steal just to get the money that was set aside for them because all of the major corporations like your walmarts and shit like that took most of the money you know they're like what about us we got employees we have freaking you know nearly a thousand employees we have 12 dealerships we need help too yeah. <laughs> and they had to, and they that, got it yeah i remember uh, i think it probably went out to visit you or you and matt and jam or your mom and i went out or something just yeah, i can't remember after the travel started ticking back up during covid and so we're flying and i'm going to name the airline american airlines mm -hmm. and they got i'm sure millions of dollars in COVID money. Oh, yeah. What's that? To keep their employees, right? What did they call that? They had a name Retention. For it. Yeah, um, it was a, anyway, it, yeah. was, it was money. Protect, paycheck protection P plan. PPP. Yeah, Pay triple P. Yeah. yeah, paycheck protection plans. I'm sure they got, I don't know how much. I guess I can look it up and find out. So we're flying to Arizona, Phoenix. We get to Phoenix, and we're sitting on the plane, and we're sitting on the plane, and we're waiting, and we're waiting, and we're waiting. And finally, the the flight attendant comes up and says, "Well, we're short. The ground crew's short staffed. Uh, we're waiting for somebody to come and put the jetway in place." And I'm thinking to myself, "Self, <laughs> what happened to all that PPP money people got? <laughs> I thought you were supposed to retain these employees. What the hell? Yeah. You know, I mean, where's what am I sitting on this plane for 15, 20 minutes for waiting oh, yeah. for somebody to come do this? And thankfully, know? the company <laughs> I worked for laid off no one." They were like, no, we got this money. I think this the honest people probably did that. I but. think I actually <laughs> used to work for uh, one of the few honest people in the car business. <laughs> yeah. but, but anyway, we're off, we're off track here. <laughs> we're kind of off track. Was, yeah, sorry about that. But no, I... You know. So, you know... I, I, okay. You know, to, for me, to kind of sum up my what I did in my research, one, I was a little surprised uh, hmm. when I found... I was a surprised... At, how much money we spend and how little return we get for it. Yeah. That really surprised me. And having been overseas, been to France a couple of times, been in their pharmacies, been around their product. I, like I said, I never had to go to the hospital or anything. I hope I never do. But uh, the people seem okay with what they have. Mm -hmm. And, and in a lot of countries, I, a little bit of research I did on this, you can go to a pharmacy and they can prescribe medicine. Uh, you go in there, I got a headache. I mean, a really bad headache. I need something besides aspirin. And, and they can take your symptoms and look at you and say, oh, well, here, try this. You know? And I looked up <clears throat> one stat before we started, and it was average life expectancy in the world. Mm -hmm. Um 
Lowest, I think, is Mexico. They were the lowest. Really? They're like 70.4, I think. Mm, no they're, they're much lower. No surprise by that. Uh, the highest, England at 80. France was right behind them. Spain, Portugal, all South Korea, places, all <laughs> Denmark. <laughs> yeah. But you yeah. know where we were? We were falling. We're now, we mm. are now down to 77 years. Yeah. And we were right in the middle. And this is the richest country in the world. Yeah. And there's oh, no absolutely. reason for that. It is unacceptable. And it needs to be, we, th- politicians need to know, this is unacceptable. Yeah, we're the richest country in the world with one of the, with a middle of the road health system is what I found out. Yeah. And that should be fixed. That's unacceptable yeah, to it's me. It's unacceptable. Invest in your people. So all you young folks out there, if there's any that's listening, uh, you know, you need to get some people in office that are going to yes, do yes. something. And, and start know. demanding that. You and know? start demanding it. Because yeah. the current crop running, they're not going to do it. <laughs> they're not going to do it. They ain't going to do shit. Just you got those two other. doddering old fools we're going to have to vote for uh, oh, again in the, in the next presidential election. They're going to get kicked in the nuts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm not going to vote for either one of them. No, probably. I didn't the past two times. So. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, they're not going to fix anything. They can't even wind their watch. <laughs> so... <laughs> So anyway, uh, summing it all up, uh, our healthcare system is not that good for what we pay for. No, I agree. As someone who's been always trying to just keep up with it, just so I can breathe, uh, it has never been good for me. It's yeah. never worked for me, yeah. and and it sucks. But well, I hope we didn't piss too many people. Oh, <laughs> you know, we probably did, but I don't probably really did. care anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. But. Yeah. You know, thanks for listening to us, guys. But, you know, we'll be back again. Um, I in the middle of I start tomorrow filming. You know the movie, and I, maybe my next day off we'll record another one. And um, you know, hopefully it's nothing not as uh, serious as this one. Yeah, it's all depending on what comes through the pipeline on yeah, this one. Yeah, but this, uh, one, this one just came out of thin air. We thought, hey, let's talk about yeah, this you know. But and then uh, when I started researching, I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> Our healthcare system's a mess. <laughs> you, know? But, you know, we appreciate you guys. Thanks for listening, and uh, have a wonderful night and a great weekend and a good week. And we'll talk to you next time. Um, I'm Nick Bickerbunch. I'm Michael, and uh, enjoy yeah. enjoy life. Have a good one. <laughs> yeah. Have a good time. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye.